Good evening, friends. Thanks for joining me. This is Barb Payask. I'm going to paint a still life for you tonight. No surprise there, I guess. This is an 8x10 Centurion oil primed panel. Hopefully it's not going to fall off of there on us. I uh, was interested tonight in doing some glass. I uh, ran across a little bottle yesterday. I thought, I don't think I painted that. And I've got, of course, like, you know, I've got a lot of things. Um, and I played around with some setups, and uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do. It's not all glass that I'm doing here. Two pieces of glass, and I bought that fresh pair today because I love the coloring, and I threw the berries behind it. I had another glass bottle there, and uh, the one, it was taller, and it created almost too much negative space, I thought, so uh, this felt better. I looked through it with my view catcher and um, determined I wanted to go vertical. So I've set it for an 8x10 and look through there. Um, don't know if you painted glass before. I enjoy painting glass. It uh, really is about observation and just trying to paint what you see there. Um, I've watched a lot of people over the years paint glass and sometimes the less experienced artists seem to think it's just a matter of uh, get your color there and then they kind of almost outline the shape with paint you know and that's okay but that's not really what I'm seeing when I look over there so my goal will be to try to paint what I see like always um, I don't I'm not going to tone tonight no reason if you watched the last one I did tone it with an orange which is something I do frequently Looks like I didn't get quite everything out here. I use a limited palette, a warm and cool of each primary, and uh, transparent red oxide and Indian yellow. And that's what I didn't get out here. So, all right, now I think I got it. I was using my tube roller and um, squeezing out the remainders of some paint out of a couple of tubes. That thing does a great job. I've, th I've showed you that before, but it's a metal one that I ordered from uh, Dick Blick. Put the tube in there and run it through the rollers, and it just, it's, it's fabulous. Here, I'll show you what it did to the tube. <laughs> Pretty good, right? You don't waste much. I mean, and you can dig around in the top and get whatever little residue you might not have gotten out, but, and it's fun, you know? <laughs> What more do you want? All right, so I'm just grabbing some blue and some transparent red oxide, and we're gonna sketch on just with a little brush. I'm standing tonight, which I prefer to do, and decide how to fill the canvas. Like I said, I laid some berries there too. And I do like seeing the uh, the overhang of the fabric, so I'd like to I'd like to keep that. I say we got our berries running over here, so the pear is about in there. I'm not real particular, you know, about getting a real precise sketch. When you get too picky with a sketch, sometimes you you're hesitant to change it. you know, becomes too precious to you and uh, you want to be willing to change it. And there's different ways to sketch. Um, David LaFell is an excellent artist and there's a video of him on here and he uh, he's a portrait artist. He's just so good. But he uh, he's doing a face in one video I recall and he just kind of works back and forth and back and forth like that to sketch it in, which is something you could do. I did take a workshop one time where we kind of, that is kind of how we did it. And I, I always feel like, you know, I can adjust things when I p apply paint, and I usually do, so.
that I thought of, I, I enjoyed doing glass. If you watched my last video, I did um, that green salt shaker and uh, Yeah, I wasn't going to put a pear in it, but I was at the grocery today, and uh, aren't artists funny? I was playing in the pears, and this one had nice coloring, and of course, then you got to set him up to make sure his bottom set's okay, you know? <laughs> if anybody saw us, they'd think we were nuts playing with produce, right? Old here today. Days are getting longer though, I've noticed. It gives me hope. You know, and you can kind of, when you've got something that have a, has a top like this, you can kind of go back and forth to help you get that shape if you need to. I can see just a little bit of the side here too. Okay, I'm kind of judging. I don't think I've got this down far enough. I've got these berries here. I don't know, we'll decide. I just thought it might add another little element to it. And I don't have it back against the wall, so I don't have a shadow on the wall, which might have been nice. I do have some shadows here and here. And with glass, a lot of times you get interesting effects because uh, this one's full of like a potpourri, but um, light will come through the glass and you get some shadow area and sometimes you get reflections and uh, things you can look for, you know. And sometimes you get really intense bright light that will shoot through a, a glass jar. So again, just look for those things. All right, um, decide which brush I want to use here. Brushes are Rosemary and Company. I have, um, I'll show you the difference. These are the ivory, which are more like a bristle. They're a white one. This is Rosemary and Company. And then this is the Evergreen series, which is a softer, I'm sorry, I'm not on camera, which is a softer brush. But these are both Rosemary and Company. They make, you know, every size and length and My goal, like always, is to get things blocked in. And a lot of times I'll start with my darkest darks. I usually work dark to light and thick, um, thin to thick. So we'll start with that blue bottle because it's behind and we'll look for the darkest parts of it first to lay in, which there aren't a lot of darks, but uh, Well, if you're an artist, tell me what you're working on. I'm always interested to hear. You can kind of see, like this is the front face, and I can see a little bit of the sides of it, too. And a good way to measure is, I've said this before, keep your arm very, very straight, and you can use your paintbrush, but keep that arm straight. I'm going to measure and see how much of the jar the bottom takes up, and then compare it to the lid. And it's actually about that right there. Well, that's pretty close then, apparently, about to there. Using a big brush, because I would like to, the finished painting to be loose, and I consider myself an impressionist. So it's it's a pretty good sized brush, and I'll may stay with that a while. I 
and looking through that down to about this point, I can see the background. And I'm squinting. It's not real dark. And it's a warmer color. About like that. I'm going to dip into a tiny bit of water so the paint moves a little bit. I don't use a medium, but of course you can. If that's your preference. I like panels. I, I prefer actually the hard surface to paint on, though I do paint on a lot of stretch canvas. I prefer the feel of it. And then through here we're looking at the table, which gets um, much lighter. So again, I consider this a block and it doesn't have to be perfect. We're getting the canvas covered, we're getting the colors on. When you come back toward the end and you put your final strokes in, decide where you need to develop things and change things. Those are your most important strokes. Those strokes should be um, in the right place and the right value and color, and they should be clean, not overworked strokes. Those are your real important strokes. I've been doing some pet commissions lately. I feel fortunate about that. Just finished one, shipped one off, and I got one dry in here. Okay, the bottom is a, a, a pretty kind of green-blue color. We're going to dip a little bit again because I'm not getting coverage. And again, you know, this is looking through, so and I can see those berries back there. I'm not sure how we're going to handle that, whether we'll include them even. We'll see if we need them. So that's about how things are divided. And glass, a lot of what explains glass are the, the um, highlights, of course. That's the fun part. This one has a kind of a cork in it as does the little guy. I dumped the potpourri out and then I put it back. I think I like it in there. And I've, uh, as you see, I hit it with a light. So we've got our nice light on our pear and part of that tall jar. I love still life. Bet you didn't know that. <laughs> I've said that before, I like them because it's, you know, it's my little world, it's what I created and put together and I think it's fun. Sorry about that. And over here on this side, it's a little um, chalkier looking. A little lighter. I'm trying to, uh, again, I'm trying to be observant and, and paint what I see. And I, I'm, I'm not going to be dishonest even though I use the limited palette. I, I do have some phthalo on here um, for ball jars and things like this. With this blue kind of green color, I, I do use some phthalo. Thalo is a tricky, very <laughs> saturated color to use. 
I wouldn't start off using it if you're a new painter probably. It can just overpower everything. But it's a beautiful color. There, you can see it here and you can see it there. I'm going to glaze over this with a uh, some of the thalo and white and kick that back. You know, actually, again, all this is behind. It, it's inside there, what you're seeing, so. You know, and I always say this, but when we paint the background in, that's an opportunity to uh, clean up the shapes. It's catching a lot of light right there. Let's lay this brush down and go back to that little brush for a minute. It's a little early for these highlights, but I'm doing them. I always say this, but I have a couple light sources which because I have a ceiling light and a spotlight on it, so. That's good enough for now. We got it covered. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but we're gonna move on. Let's, let's do the pair. I'm gonna clean this brush out. I don't always do that because I don't mind intermixing colors, but I've got phthalo on it, and again, phthalo will take over everything. The nice thing about not, you know, some people, like I said, are very particular. They pre-mix colors. They have a brush for every color. Nothing ever intermixes. But I don't mind because, you know, say I get a little bit of this color into that and this, I think it works, you know, to uh, pull them back and forth. All right, let's look at the pair. I think we'll start with the lightest, cleanest part of the pair where the light's hitting it over here. which is a yellow. Okay, take a look at this. Let's make sure I'm, I've got this shape correctly before we go. It cuts across here, and it's out here a little further, okay. I see some of it right there, a nice rich color. As you move around, we're going to stick a little red into that. I also gave this, you know, chose one with a nice stem too. That's the advantage of real fruit over the fake stuff. For the longest time we did the, we have Kroger pick up here where you can order your stuff online and you don't have to go to the store except drive up and they load up your car. And we did that for the longest time, but uh, I'm back to shopping again now. getting a little darker. I got into some crimson as it goes around this way. I 
looked more green to me over here, but again, I'm not I'm not too worried about things being real precise at this point. Obviously, they're not, you know. And we can blend these strokes together. I mean, you can blend on your canvas and uh, darker down in there, I see. You know, we'll ground it when the time comes with a, uh, a shadow. And the stem is brown. Of course, one side is nicely lit. You know, and things do not have to be the exact right color. They do need to be the right value, though, so. And this is a big brush to be doing this with. Get darker for the back of the stem. I took a workshop once where the gal had like a, a certain way she, painted this stem. She's a very good artist, Nancy Frank, um, but she would like, if I remember right, like wiggle and pull down, and that's how she did all her stems, and uh, it looked good. I mean, whether that was exactly what was, what we were seeing or not, you know, I don't know, but someplace I've got that painting from her workshop where I painted pears, eh, maybe next time but you can see how the stems looked, if I could find it. They looked good. Yeah, she's a good artist. She is a ball of energy. I wish she's in down in Atlanta. I wish she lived around here. I would, I would take lessons from her. She just literally ran from person to person and uh, had her finger in everybody's painting, and she was fun. told me I should teach. You know, I've considered that over and over. I've never quite felt like I had the space for it. And I'm sure it can be rewarding and frustrating all at the same time, right? I'm going to pull this out a little bit because I don't want it this perfect pear shape, you know. to just observe and we'll may thin this down as we paint the background in you know and again we'll be grounding it all right let's move on to the next one like I said this one's full of I don't know if it was a good choice or not but it's full of potpourri so um, and I don't know what it may end up looking like it's just a warm color a little bit of variation in it, not a lot. So we'll just start out and we'll just kind of block in that shape. You know, like I said, I emptied it and then I put it back in. Maybe I didn't need it. Well, they're supposed to start working on those injections, I guess, the vaccines, but uh, people are having trouble. I think they're running behind and people are having trouble getting them. 
I have some friends that she's in her 80s and he's over 90 and they haven't got it yet and they were supposed to have it by now. I'm sure I can't even imagine the task of giving it to everybody. You know, you have mixed feelings. I do. I have little, some mixed feelings about even getting it, you know. It was developed quick. It's a little scary. I figure that's how we cured polio and smallpox was a vaccine, so. Let some other people go first, right? <laughs> uh, they've already given it. They've been actually giving it, I guess, for months to people, so. And I'm using some of this phthalo blue, which, you know, is nice. It pulls it together with that one because this is kind of a blue-green color, too. And even though this has a cork in it, if it helps you to do your lips and go all the way around and pretend the cork's not there, you know, do that. Sometimes I think it does. Again, this brush is pretty large. I'm going to get a small brush out for some of these highlights. Like, uh, I think they help define the shape of the jar. This may be a little early to do this. We end up wiping them off even, you never know. This is not right here, I can see that, but not worry about it. I just love painting. I love the feel of pushing it around and like I said, I'm so glad to have it, especially now, something to do and it just never stops being fun for me. Um, if you paint, you know, and you're blessed to have it in your life. A little darker there. You know, we made glaze over that like we did with this, kind of just to you know, because it is, uh, it's a green color too. This dark stuff is inside it. And again, I haven't decided how we'll handle that. We may just kind of put in some little colors that I see here, color variations. People don't have to know what it is. And this guy, obviously, we're looking at the top of this lid because uh, we're over top of it. Let's get a little tiny bit of water again. Yeah, 
I just sold a painting today too and dropped it off to somebody. That was nice. A, uh, a friend of mine. Those red high heels that I painted online here a while back. I don't know if you remember them or not. It's really honor, you know, it's really a compliment when a friend buys work from you. Isn't it? shape of that I keep I mentioned last time I've been sketching. I've been doing a little face every day of my followers on uh, TikTok. And uh, again, you know, if you follow me, I'm not a portrait artist, but I've been having fun with it. And uh, it's nice when they recognize themselves. <laughs> so I've been, I've only got a couple that haven't been claimed. I've done quite a few of them already. Um, you know, it's to encourage them to come check out my channel and uh, watch my video, videos. This may be over too far, we'll have to decide. But I spend about 15 minutes on these little sketches, and I, I tape them in fast speed. So I uh, can post them, and they only last about 30 seconds. Or I may have made this a little taller than it is. Does it matter? I don't know. You know, it's not like it's a commission. looking for some of the darker values that maybe I missed. You know, um, I don't think we're going to do the berries because I don't think they would add enough to it. We'd have a couple here and through the jar. I don't know. Let's mix up something for the background. I do a lot of uh, ultramarine and transparent red oxide. Um, you know, and this is the color. This is we're seeing that through there. So let's mix up those two colors. Again, we don't have any shadows back there because these bottles are not pushed back. So we'll mix those two and we're going to lighten it. I like to keep it on the warm side. rather than cool, you know, I think it's more attractive. So let's see where our background's hitting our, our fabric. Well, it's right here, huh? Because we're seeing it through that jar. And we're going to thin it down a little bit. This is where I miss not having toned the background is when I paint in like this and uh, I don't have the tone there to help me out.
And I don't want it to be one solid color, so I'm grabbing some different stuff. A lot of artists I've noticed over the years, they don't, they don't get uh, good coverage on their background and a lot of white canvas coming through and they obviously like it that way. I, I have a hard time leaving it like that. I kind of like it covered. That's why the, that's when the toner comes in nice. We're going to have to come back into this stem and uh, re put that bright part in again, which is no big deal at all. But anyway, they, if you zoom in on their paintings, they've got uh, white canvas coming through all over. Makes a big difference to get the background covered, I think, you know. And that's why it's hard, even though sometimes you get discouraged part way through, you need to keep pushing, I, I feel, and get everything covered. And then you can judge your values and your color better and, you know, rather than getting discouraged and wipe it off part way through, you know, just keep going and uh, you can always do that later. A little tiny bit of water again. These are Cobra for the most part, which I love. Water mixable oils. Let's look at this. This doesn't feel right. It's kind of angled like that. Feels a little tall to me. I think we'll readjust this and pull it down. So we'll have to clean that up. Okay, the bottom, we're going to, we'll use the same mixture, but we'll go much, much lighter. And I'm going to warm it a little bit for the fabric. The advantage of using the same pile and uh, is I think everything becomes more cohesive then and uh, and don't get real picky about where the front meets the back. I try not to do that. I I try not to have a hard edge there. I get a little blue there from our sketch, which is okay. water again. If you uh, aren't familiar with Cobra, I think you can find, I'm sure you can, you can find some videos on and watch uh, how they use them. Um, it's no problem at all putting water in them if you want, like I do. Um, Charlie Hunter is a very good artist if you're familiar with Charlie and he uses Cobra and he, um, he puts a lot of water in them. His paintings look very much like uh, sepia photos. His drawing skills are phenomenal. Okay, I'm looking at where my shadow should be here. That's what I'm doing. Gonna have a shadow from the pear. Yeah, he has all kinds of tricks. He uses uh, scrapers and he does all kinds. I, I bought one of his DVDs a while back. I own a lot of DVDs. <laughs> uh, some are great and some aren't as good. And 
there if you have one it's really good the nice thing is you can watch them over and over you know I always wished at this point I'd, I'd put that tone on because then it's not as hard to cover. We're probably going to come back and uh, we'll clean that up. I'm not unhappy with that. We've got to look at this again and this lower part, of course. We just, as you can tell, we just threw that on. Yeah, I'm not happy with this shape here. My feeling is you don't have to explain everything. Um, I think people need to figure some things out. Defining that bottom a little bit. Do we have to add a few highlights to this yet? through some paper towels. I use Viva. I like Viva. I'm laying these on pretty thick. I mean, I, I'm painting with oils. I always figure why not show them off a little bit. And I see some, well, I've got one of them there, some highlights looking through there. Just reevaluating everything and changing some things, and I think I have that edge a little um, tall, so I'm bringing that down.
a little bit of uh, light shooting across there. I'm going to take a little bit of this um, phthalo and lay it into here. We'll see what, because I am getting that color. I see it on the tablecloth right there. For a while, I was really good about cleaning this board up so it wasn't so ugly for you guys to see, but then I forgot. And once you let it dry, you know how it is. You can't get it off then. If you're an artist in, in the area where I live, um, I got a newsletter today from the Arts Alliance which is the local arts organization here. And right now the plan is to have um, three art shows this year. I think June and September, like we always do at Cottle Park, if you know where that is. And then they're going to have one in November at the Manor House. So if you're an artist, go online and you can apply to do any or all of those shows. I think you have to send in five images of your work and. Uh, the November sounds interesting, I think. That should be a good time of year, I would think. People shopping for Christmas. Yeah, I might think about that. The one in, <coughs> in September we do at the Cottle Park, which is where my Monday group, that uh, paint, we paint there. So every year we have a show, our group in the house. So I would think we'll probably be doing that again. We gotta get back together. We've been on a long break here. Kind of wait until everybody gets their shots, I guess. I'm not sure. It just got so there were fewer and fewer of us, and uh, there's a lot of older people, and you know, people just scared of the virus. So I don't know what we're doing exactly. We've we've been meeting for like 15 years. I know I miss the group. Some of them wasn't too, wasn't too concerned about it, and they were the ones that were still coming. And uh, I don't know. I, I figure I'll know when it's time to go back. Just 
kind of looking around. Um, the pear, you know, is kind of a a lot of a orangey color in it. So I'm thinking I'm going to take some of that and put it right here, like reflected color. You know, we've got that nice blue all over. And glass does that, you know, it reflects the colors around it. but the pear is a little lighter down here where it's reflecting the tablecloth. And a lot of times I'll turn things upside down and make sure they read <coughs> straight, and I may be doing that yet, you know. I'm just not going to do it right now because I've got it taped to here. I kind of like that nice dark I've got in there. This angle here feels to me a little bit um, like it needs to be straighter, so I may be adjusting that. Looking at my highlights again. One there where the light's coming through. And I think I've got them on that jar pretty good. Couldn't bring this one up a little bit. But anyway, you know, like I said, glass is about trying to paint what you see. Everything is, I mean, really, when you paint out of your head, I think it looks like you paint out of your head. See if everything reads okay. All right, we're, I think we're going to quit. Wait a minute, let me do one more thing here. Can't really see the back edge of this lip. Cleaning up this brush here. It's a nice soft brush, this evergreen. Um, I'm going to pull a few edges. See if I feel like I need to do that anyplace else. No, I think just there maybe. All right, I'll get you in front of it. How long we've we been at this? Let's see, 55 minutes. That's not long. 
All right, there you are right in front of it. Again, you can't tell what's in the little jar, and I don't know that it matters, but I may throw in a few more um, lighter values to suggest something is in it. Um, and the, here's the big jar. Like I said, we tried to paint what I could see the what was behind it, the darker area, then it went to the tablecloth and the bottom of its green. We had a stripe of light coming across here that I put in, and I brushed out the pear at the end because I wanted to. So, all right, let's see if we can, so there's your three objects. Again, there's a little variation in color in the Pope face, so I may put some of that in. Okay, all right. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do that. And leave me a comment if you would. I enjoy reading those. I'll put a link to my website in the description box and uh, hit the bell when you uh, subscribe and they'll, they'll let you know when I upload a new video. And I thank you so much for joining me. All right, watch for me next time. Stay well. Well, I'll try to, right? Good night.